Well, hey. Hello. Look at my nails. Aren't they nice? This is um, the colour that was in the Shalander, along with like that grey blue one. But this one's nice and shiny. Good for doing a nice um, Christmassy kind of sparkly bits video. Cat hairs and stuff all over this velvet. But everything in this house is cat hairs. Everything. Anyways, what have we got here? I've also put on some um, kind of Christmassy music in the background. Not sure when I'm going to put this video up, but I might do it. I don't know. I was going to ask you your opinion. Should I put this up on Christmas Day? But you're going to not know that I said that until I put it up. So that's a silly question really, isn't it? But yeah, maybe I'll put it up Christmas evening so that people have got something to chill to. Or maybe Christmas Eve. Ah, <gasps> Christmas Eve. Calm before the storm. Anyways, so the first bit out, this is one that I bought in um, Dog Lot the other day. Uh, this is where I went to into Bridgend and I met up with uh, someone that used to be in the shop. And uh, he picked up a bunch of costume jewellery and I went through and I picked out the bits that I like. And even though these aren't popular at the moment, these kind of earring, um, earrings, necklaces, I think they're absolutely lovely and super sparkly and proper Christmassy and New Year'sy and Valentine's Daisy and St. Patrick's Day and my birthday, International Lex Day. I just think they're lush. Festoon, festoon. Uh, sometimes I want to go to the top of a mountain and shout festoon, festoon. For no reason. No, people look at me a bit weird. Or a bit weirder than they normally do. Okay, next out. Go with this one. Let's go with that one. We'll go with that one because it's not terribly exciting. But there was a bit of a theme of things like when I was buying the stuff from Gary that everything seemed to be floral. So this has got a, that's just glass in there, I think. Glass betrending, betrending, pretending to be something else. Um, um, but yeah, so like pretty flowers, like daisies or something around it. That's nice, just like. Um, as a collar pin, that's kind of cute. Probably not too old, judging by the backs. I don't know, maybe 70s or 80s. And you can see there's not a proper stone, but that is glass that's been moulded in there. But still, that's cute enough, isn't it? What should we go for next? Let's go for this sparkly flower. Look. The sparkly daffodil. So that's really nice with all of the stone set in there and a bit of enamel. And it's signed on the back. Um, however, that's a modern brand that you can buy on Amazon. So that's not particularly exciting. But I think the actual brooch itself is quite nice. So I'll save that for, uh, for St. David's Day and list it close to that. Or if there's any fellow well, she's out there that fancy that, let me know. But I think that's a pretty one anyway. Lovely and sparkly. Okay, let's do this. Sorry. So we've got a nice gold tone. Look at that swan. With all pretty marker seat on the wing. And then the wing pops up and it's a little watch. Now I've seen a few different versions of this. I don't think it's, well it's not working at the moment, it'll need a new battery. And I probably don't have the right battery for it. But um, I think that says Japanese movement at the bottom and I think uh, it's from the 1980s. So I've seen some with different colour stones in there. But I got that just because I thought it's a bit camp and kitsch and why not we 
no one needs watches anymore, do they? But we don't buy them for functionality now. We buy them because they're pretty. Okay, let's go for this one. Now this is a crazy brooch. We've got dangly bits. So this is probably 1970s. And uh, it's not signed. But I'm pretty sure I've seen something similar by either Hollywood or Sphinx maybe. But that is a rather fantastic sassy tassel as uh, as Texas girl Margaret would say. But I love the black stones in there. I think that's well classy. It's a bit Studio 54, a bit disco, but very much a statement thing, isn't it? Fab mesh. A little bit Victorian revival, maybe. Yeah, it's 70s Studio 54, disco Victorian revival. That's exactly what that is. But it's cool. Whatever it is. Let's pull out another one of these fab sparkly necklaces. Look at that. Now I love that with the AB stones in there. So they sparkle rainbows. Now the reason they sparkle rainbows is because of the Aurora Borealis coating on them rather than them actually being crystals which will refract light and create rainbows. But it's so mega, mega pretty and sparkly. Probably 1960s, this really nice condition. Not missing any stones. Very little way to the gold tone on the back. But imagine that with a cocktail dress. 1950s, Audrey Hepburn style. Oof. Sexy AF. Should we go for something modern? I don't sell much modern stuff or I don't list much modern stuff because I don't tend to find a lot of it very interesting. But this I just thought was a bit of fun. And I think she's very cute. But she's a little bobot. How cute is she? Little articulated one in pink enamel. With a little heart in the middle. She just wants to learn how to love. <laughs> Aww. But I think she's super cute anyway. <laughs> I don't think it's a particular brand or anything. It's probably Chinese. <coughs> Not that that's a particularly bad thing. A lot of things that come from China are quite good. And some of them have kind of fucked up our year a bit. <laughs> but this little robot... I think she's adorable. Right. No, I'll leave that one for a little bit. Okay, you've all been eyeing up this one, haven't you? And I don't blame you. Because he's bloody gorgeous. So we've got some lovely blue and then an aqua kind of bluey green colour stones in there. Now these are proper sparkly really nicely faceted so you can see like into the stones and then lovely detail see with that waved kind of sides to the petals really gorgeous prong set three-dimensional now it's not signed but it does have a mark there that says Austria which is pretty good so this is possibly 1940s, I should think. So in extremely good condition. Not missing any stones, very little wear. Could do with a little bit of a clean up because there's some dust on it, but that is a gorgeous, gorgeous, handsome brooch. Mm -mm -mm. Super pretty. Love it. Right. We take out a weird one. Okay, here's one for you. Is it or isn't it? Hmm? 
So you might recognize these as being the Louis Vuitton uh, logo. But have you ever seen anything like this? So it's a leather strap. It's got uh, the branding on the buttons as well. There's a bit of wear on the buttons. Sorry, on the poppers. But really quite nice interesting poppers, not just like your standard ones. Now on the inside, see it's got Louis Vuitton there as well. And it says Louis Vuitton Tambor Manchester 2002. Now I've looked that up. So Tambor is um, is their watch. It's like a brand of watch that they make. And the release um, party for this was at... Um, oh, it was at a hotel in Manchester and I can't remember the name of it now. I think it begins with an F. Foundry, maybe? Something like that. Um, in 2002. So this was actually given two guests at that launch party so that is quite a rarity if it's real now if you let me know what you think on this one whether you think the stitching would be right the kind of embossing does that seem good to you I've only seen one online and that was a black one but I mean look at the stitching I don't know. I don't know. But for me, I would say the quality is there for something that was probably given away on the night as a freebie, like in a goodie bag or something. But yeah, let me know what you think on that one. It's an odd one, not something that uh, you'd come across regularly, I think. Okay, next we've got another brooch. So we've got a lovely attacking seagull. He is definitely going to come down and steal your chips. At least I think he's a seagull. He looks like a seagull to me. Uh, he's in a very lightweight plastic, moulded, and on the back uh, it says made in England. With a very old clasp on it. I reckon this is probably like a seaside resort kind of souvenir. Somewhere that's probably known you know, a by the sea kind of place that has a lot of seagulls there that will come down and steal your chips. And I think it's one of those, like, a kind of novelty, cutesy brooch. I think it's quite cool anyway. Look at his face, he looks like a bugger. <laughs> but I think he's good. But good fun. You can sit there next to this one and they can have a little heated argument about things. That's what it looks like they're doing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, next, let's go for something a bit different. Let's go for this one. Oof. So this is in the lot of stuff I got from Gary as well. So that's just a nice purple stone on sterling silver, fully hallmarked inside and as well. But that's quite handsome. Nice cocktail ring, nice dress ring. Some of the bits, glitz and glam that you might wear for like New Year's or something. That's a bit of fun anyway, isn't it? I was happy to get that in the lot. I think it's cool. Right. Now, what shall we pull out next? Shall we pull out something that I'm going to keep? So sometimes you've got to get presents for yourself, haven't you? It's only fair. And this is something that I am keeping for myself. So this is sterling silver bracelet. Lovely textured, like hammering in there. Looks a bit brutalist in style. So I was quite surprised to find out from the hallmarks that are right there. That this is 2008. And I really expected it to be a bit older than that. So it's fully hallmarked. Um, but I think it's still like a one-off artisan kind of one. Because it's really unusual. And I just really like that style. It's 
quite simple, quite unisex as well, androgynous. Um, but I just think it's really interesting. So that's a keeper for me. I've worn it a few times as well. I've worn it out a few times and I really like wearing it. So it's certainly a, a catch for the moment. Okay, next thing we're pulling out. Here we go. So we've had some flowers here, some flowers there. We've had the Welsh daffodil. And now we've got a nice Scottish thistle. Super bright, isn't it? Look at that. With all the lovely Celtic symbols around the outside. More thistle and then a nice glass bead in the middle there. And this is a signed one, and this is Nispa. Here we go. Oh, I blind you, sorry. But yeah, that's quite a handsome one, isn't it? So you could wear it like as a sash pin, lapel pin. I think that's really nice. Um, these little sparkly baubles Gary just threw into the lot. He's like, go on, you can have them. He's like, they're gold. Um, and he's right, they are. The posts are nine carat gold. Um, but they're proper disco ball bobby dazzlers and a half, aren't they? No, oh, they'll make you go blind. <laughs> I think there might be a tiny, tiny stone missing somewhere on one of them. Maybe not. Maybe I just drank that. Oh no, there it is. So just one little stone missing in the middle there. But not like you'd particularly notice, but they are proper disco balls, aren't they? I don't think the backs are gold, but the posts are. But they're a bit of fun. I can't wear them, unfortunately. Like studs, studs just don't suit me, which is a shame. But they're just a bit of fun. Stay still. There we go. Okay. Next one out. Again, another lovely sparkly brooch. This is probably, well, this would be 1950s, 1960s. Um, again, some lovely Aurora Borealis coated rhinestones there and then a lovely gorgeous deep purple like amethyst kind of colour there not signed which is kind of usual for these sorts of brooches I had a massive one of these like huge covered your hand um, I bought that at a car boot sale in Sully I think but yeah that's super lovely isn't it as well mega mega sparkly and after, I think it's 1958, I think the Aurora Borealis coated started to be used. Don't quote me on that though. I tell lots of lies. <coughs> Excuse me, I didn't bring any water up with me. That was a bit silly. Okay, what should we pull out next? Now this one I thought was going to be a modern one uh, because of the toggle clasp on it which is quite popular like it's a modern-ish sort of popular thing get a lot of nice silver necklaces that have the toggle clasp on it and they all sell quite well lovely geometric see with the squares and then there's a nice crystal in each one lovely and sparkly collar length Probably gold plated, I should imagine. And it is signed with an N, uh, which is Napier. So it's just signed on there. I'm pretty sure, yeah, it's just N, and it's got like a crown on the top of it. But I think it's a more modern one anyway. But I think that's super cool. Really quite interesting. Again, a little bit brutalist inspired, like with the, I don't know, again, if you saw that on the south bank as a building, you would say that was brutalist. That's how I think of it as being, would that be a building on the south bank of London? I say yes. I know, I'm weird, I get it. Okay, 
Okay, how about some earrings again? So this one I bought in a job lot. I initially bought them for me. So they are sterling silver. But they're just that little bit too big for me. They are quite weighty, which isn't really a problem. But they're just... I can either suit massive earrings or small hoops, small dangly ones, or just long, long dangly ones. This size hoop doesn't really suit me, I don't think. But I love the detail on them. So it's got the stones on the outside there, up until there, and then no stones because they then put the stones on the inside. So from this direction, you get the sparkle all the way around, which is cool. And then that's like the backs of them. But stamp 925 in there. And I think they're super lovely. And really, like they've got a decent weight on them as well. Very nice. Really nice condition. Really interesting as well. Okay, next bit out. We've only got three bits left. Four bits left. Right. I don't know what kind of flower this is, or what kind of branch, leaf, berry. I first of all thought, oh, holly, mistletoe, something Christmassy. But I'm really not sure, so if anybody knows, like, please do tell me. I mean, I could do reverse image search, but you know, what's the fun of that? Um, but this is good because it's signed there exquisite which means it's probably one of the um, birth flowers like flowers of the month which are very collectible if this uh, was in pristine condition and especially if it had its original box or card you could probably get around about 50 60 quid for it which is just crazy isn't it um especially like the christmasy ones um there is a holly one and i have seen that go for like 50 something pounds bonkers but yeah, so I'm not quite sure which one this is, but if you recognise it, let me know. It has got some wear to it. See, there's some of the, the red coming off there. And there's a little bit of wear to the leaves. But I should still hope for around about 20 something pound on that, depending on, obviously, what flower this is. Okay. So one last necklace. Necklace. And this is gorgeous. Look at that. So we've got lovely four leaf clovers, shamrocks. Shamrocks are three leaves, aren't they? Is that right? But lovely kind of diamond cut, gold plated for sure. On this really nice like wide mesh chain, graduated down. It's not particularly old though, unless the clasp has been replaced but I don't think it has so I think this may be 19 I don't know mid 90s need to look a bit older but I think that's super cute so I'll be saving that for St Patrick's Day I think people might just want it for good luck though and heck knows we all need some of that right now don't we Okay, last but one piece. We've got an axe. Because who doesn't need an axe, huh? So how cool is this? Look at the length of that pin on the back. Extremely long. There's a slight bit of damage there. But as you can see the damage, can you see it almost looks a bit like charcoal? So I think this is proper jet. And then that is, it's not quite sterling silver, but it does have a silver content in it, but it also has copper in it as well because of the green oxidization that you've got there. So this, this is, is a proper antique, I think. Victorian, I should imagine. I'm not sure, but this is something that I want to do like more research on. Um, I've done the reverse Google image search on this and it doesn't really come up with anything too similar to it but I do think it's kind of cool and that lovely etching work like on the blade of the axe there 
that's really cool. Now I've got a pendant, um, just like an obelisk kind of shape. It's on, over on my Etsy store that is sort of similar in design to this. And I'm pretty sure that one is jet, but that one has sterling silver settings in it. But I think that's pretty cool. And the fact that it's an axe. That's an axe, you know? An axe. It's awesome. <laughs> I'll give that to the dueling birds to play with here. And then last thing out for you guys is just a little pin. And it is super cute because it is a mini Azumi. That's exactly what she looked like as a kitten, you know, except with a little diamond white on the front. She was the cutest button little kitten, honestly. And she used to run around, run around, run around, and then fall over sleep. She used to love sleeping on my computer, because it was warm. But yeah, I just thought, adorable little pin. Who doesn't love a little black cat? And if you don't, go away. <laughs> but super cute. Right, that's everything for today. I hope you've enjoyed this. Yeah, I think I'll put this out Christmas Eve so that people can have, hopefully, a little bit of chill time before Santa comes and drops off all of their presents and you all have as lovely time as you can have, even if it's watching a bit of telly and getting pissed or chatting remotely with a friend or Zoom party with your family or... Even just watching a good film. Sometimes that'll do, isn't it? But yeah. Until the new year. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.